In this video, we're going to look at some Google Chrome extensions. And specifically, we're going to focus in on some extensions that are useful for teachers and students. But also, most of these are useful for just about anyone that uses Google Chrome. And the first thing that you need to know about Google Chrome extensions is how to get them. And the place you go for that is in the upper left corner. You click on the Apps button. Now, if I go to the upper left corner, I don't see an Apps button. I do have this over here, and this represents Google Apps. Okay, and I can click on that to see some Google Apps. But the Apps button that we're looking for right now is a little different. Okay, and it should be in the upper left corner, but it's not there. So the reason it's not there is I don't have my bookmarks bar showing. So here, up at the top of the screen, making sure that I have Google Chrome selected, up at the top of the screen, I need to click where it says View and Always Show Bookmarks Bar. If I do that, in the upper left corner, I should get the app symbol. And it looks very similar to this app symbol. It's basically nine squares. Some people call it the waffle. But this is a colorful waffle. And uh, I just go ahead and click on that, and it takes me to my collection of Chrome apps on this computer. By default, you get pretty much all of these. I think these are all the defaults that just come with any Google account if you're using Chrome. But the one that's most important at this time for me is the Web Store app. And I can just click on that and it takes me to the Google Chrome App Store or Web Store. And you can see that there's a bunch of extensions that are recommended. And I can tell they're extensions because that's highlighted here. You can also delve into themes and apps and games. But for this video, we're going to focus just on the Chrome Web Store extensions. And I highly recommend that you browse through these and read through and add ones that are appealing to you and useful to you. But let me steer you toward a few that I really like. The first one, though, is called G Suite Training. If I do my search for G Suite Training, you can see there's a few that come up, but this is the one that I would recommend. Now, whenever you're doing searches for Google Chrome extensions, it's a good idea to take notice of how many reviews there are for each of these and how many stars they have. But you can also read about what they do and what they're for and who made them. So this one is owned by Google. And I can just click Add to Chrome. It explains to me what it's going to be able to do if I add this extension. What information of mine is it going to be able to see and so forth. And I'll just click Add Extension. And once that's done, notice that I get a little icon here in the upper right. But other than that, it seems like nothing really happened. But that symbol there, that is an extension. And at any point, I can click on that to get some options, to go to the G Suite training, and other things. Okay, so now that I've added that, what is it good for? What does it do? Basically, to show you how that's useful, the G Suite training, I need to jump into my Google Drive, or to Google Calendar, or one of these major Google apps. So I'm going to go to Calendar. Now here I am in Google Calendar, and you can see in the upper right corner, it says, what's new in G Suite? And this is all based on that extension that I added. I can find out what's new in G Suite. And this is just ready to teach me what's new in Google Calendar, in Google Drive, and pretty much all of G Suite. And so going forward, let's say I'm using Google Calendar and I'm just not quite getting how to use it. All I have to do is go up here and I could click here on the extension symbol or I could click on this. This symbol appears only because I installed this G Suite training extension. But I could click on that. It pops open a panel on the side and I could search for what I'm having trouble with. Okay, Or I could just go down and select one of these major calendar tasks or questions that people often have. So searching for events. I'm struggling with that. I click on that. There's an introduction to searching. I can click play. You can use the search box up here to search across all your calendars for events. This can be a particularly useful and fast way to find and open a specific event. This extension basically will teach me how to use Calendar better. And if I already understand that, I can click Skip to Next. You may want to access some more advanced search options to help improve your searches. Click this button to open the advanced search options. And notice that this is more than just a voice kind of telling you what to do. It also changes the look and feel of your Google app that you're working in, and it makes it an interactive experience for you. You're supposed to click there, and then it responds, and then you can move on. So this is really a great tutorial, basically, but it's an interactive tutorial that's built into 
Google Chrome. Now if I were to go to Google Drive, you would see this same circle with the question mark and it could teach me how to use Google Drive better. So that's the first extension that I recommend to people, G Suite Training. I think it's great. A second Google extension that's kind of exciting and useful is called Google Tone. And this one's kind of interesting. If you click Add to Chrome, it'll add Google Tone, obviously, to your list of extensions here in the upper right. And you're ready to go at that point. Now, what Google Tone is, is it's a way for a group of people to easily share URLs or website addresses to each other. And it's all done through a tone that's played in Google Chrome. So let's say this person here is on a website that they want to share with the others. All they do is they make sure they're on that URL. So quickly let me go to a web address that I want to share with other people. And then once they're on that web page, that web address, they just click the Google Tone symbol where it says broadcast this URL. You click on that and it plays a tone and any computer that hears that tone, if that computer has Google Tone installed and active, it will take them to this same website. But again, everyone in the team would have to have Google Tone installed and their computer has to be within hearing range so that the microphone on their computer can hear it. But if that's the case, that one website is broadcast out and the other people, their computers will go to that exact same website and web page. So it's a lot of fun if you work in a team or if you work in groups of any kind. All right, the next extension we're gonna look at is called goo.gl. And many of you are already familiar with goo.gl or Google. It's a URL shortener. And there's various versions of this that you can get. This is the one that I'm going to get. I'm gonna click add to Chrome and add extension. And now with this extension added to my Google Chrome, what I can do is let's say I'm on a website and I'd like to share that website with others, but maybe I don't wanna use Google Tone. Maybe that tone would be too distracting or maybe I'd like to share it with people later, not in this moment right now. And let's say this is the web page I'd like to share. Now, right now it's nice and short, classtools.net. It's a wonderful website, and uh, you know that URL is perfectly small and easy to share. But what if I start delving into this website and I come across a URL that's much longer, much harder for my students to maybe type in on their own into a computer, or maybe I just want to have an easy short URL that I want to share in a newsletter that I'm sending home to the parents or whatever. What I can do is click here on the goo.gl URL shortener extension and look what it did. It shortened this longer address into a much shorter address. And I could highlight that and copy it, or better yet, look, there's a copy button. Just click copy. It's now copied that URL, and I could go to Microsoft Word, I could go to Google Docs, or wherever, or my email, and then I could just right click paste, or I could do Control V or Command V, and paste in that shortened URL. This will take anyone, anyone that goes to that address, it will take them to this exact page on the internet. So this is a very useful tool, the goo.gl URL shortener. It also gives you some information about details about this shortened URL, like how many visits has it gotten. And also it even generates a QR code for you that's a scannable code that will take anyone that scans it to this exact web page. So that's another really good extension. A related extension that I use almost as much is called Bitly. Now, if you're not familiar with Bitly, it's also a URL shortener, just like goo.gl. I'm gonna add it to my Google Chrome extensions list. And if I have goo.gl, why would I ever need or use another thing like it? Why would I use Bitly? Well, the reason I sometimes use Bitly is it gives you the ability, once you've signed up for a Bitly account, and once you have accepted and authorized Bitly to access your account, at least at a low level, uh, once you've allowed that, and this is really common by the way, you're gonna see this with many of the extensions that you add to Google Chrome. And you're gonna have to make that decision about whether you wanna add it or not. But just know that the ones that are very highly reviewed, they tend to be pretty good. So I'm gonna click Allow. Now that I've got that, look what I can do. Not only will it shorten this URL to something a lot more manageable, but it's actually customizable. So I could go in and delete that ending and I could put in something like my school or maybe the name of my school. And that's gonna be a lot easier for students to remember and to type because it's a customizable URL. And I could just click save 
And that one's obviously taken, it's too obvious, but you get the idea. You could customize this with the ending that you want to have for the shortened URL. Now, anyone that types that in, including the bit.ly, will be taken to this exact web page. Okay, so we really have three extensions here that do similar things. They help other people get to a specific web page, but each of them has its own superpower or great feature that makes it worth considering. Okay, next up, I'm going to jump back to the Google Chrome Web Store and do a search for an extension called Print Friendly and PDF. Okay, so there it is, Print Friendly and PDF. Add to Chrome, add extension, and this one is wonderful, especially if you're conscious about trying to save money, trying to save ink specifically, uh, because what this does is it allows you and helps you to print in a way that is environmentally friendly and uh, saves you money. So for example, let's say I'm on the wallstreetjournal.com and I would just like to print this homepage. Okay. Now if you've tried doing stuff like this before, you know what some of the problems are going to be. When I click print, you know, look at that. It's going to print ads and that's a lot of ink. All that black and the red. Okay. And there's an ad over here and all of these images, they're nice, but it's going to take up so much ink to print this document. So instead of just clicking file print or printing some other way, I'm going to go here where I have my print friendly and PDF. When I click on that, I can start clicking on items that I don't necessarily want to print. So I don't really want to print that image or this one or this one or this one or this one. And you can just go through and you're taking out images, you're taking out ads sometimes, and also sections. Okay, this video, it's not going to print obviously, so I'll just click to delete that. And so you can really clean up a web page that you want to print. Now this may not be the best example, it's a bunch of headlines, but uh, you get the idea. You just leave intact the parts that you want to actually print, and then click print, and it'll print it out, minus all of the photos and the ads. The other thing you can do is you can quickly and easily turn this into a PDF. So you can click PDF, watch out for this button here, that's just an ad, same with this. This is the real download your PDF button that you're looking for. So click on that and it's going to download a copy of your adjusted print page and it's going to download it to your computer so that you could send it to someone else to print or to use. All right, so that's print friendly and PDF. I really like that one. Saves a lot of money and uh, printer ink. Our next extension is called Extensity, and Extensity is an extension that controls extensions. Kind of an interesting idea, but after I add that, what it enables me to do is anytime I want to, I can click on this Extensity symbol, and I can turn off extensions that I don't think I need anymore, but I'm not sure. Or maybe I don't need them right now. Now, why would this be useful? The reason why is because if you end up using a lot of extensions and adding them to your Google Chrome, pretty soon you're going to end up with, you know, 50, 60 of these littered all over your Google Chrome bookmarks bar and all over the place. And it can become a little distracting and a little overwhelming to have so many. So why not turn off ones that you don't need right now and probably not for the near future? Just switch them off. You still have them, you can still use them, but in order to use them, you'll have to click Extensity and then enable them again. So for example, if you're working by yourself, you probably don't need Google Tone, but then once you're back with your team, you could re-enable Google Tone. You can also just turn off all extensions with one click and then turn back on the ones that have been recently active and it'll turn all of those back on and then you can just add the others anytime you want. There's a few other things that you can do with Extensity, but that's really the power of it and the most useful thing about it. Okay, next up, probably my favorite of all of these. It's called Auto Text Expander. And I just love this. It's a great time saver for teachers and really for anyone that uses Google Chrome to type a lot. So I'm going to add this Auto Text Expander, add to Chrome, add extension, and there it is. You can barely even see it. But what this is, this auto text expander, anytime you want to use it, of course, you click on the extension symbol and it takes you here. And what this is for is it's for making keyboard shortcuts that you type in a couple of characters or three or four characters and a much larger amount of text is automatically thrown onto the screen. And so this is especially good if you teach online courses or if you send out emails in Gmail that have the same phrases over and over. 
So you can see now that I have this set up, anytime that I type BRB in that exact order, it's going to translate that into Be Right Back. Now I can create my own as well. So I can click here where it says Add, and I could type, okay, anytime I put Z, Z, Z in a row, those three letters, then I want it to say, don't forget to study for Friday's test. So if that's something that I send out a lot to my students, you know, I can just have that typed in, have it ready to go, and I just type ZZZ and it will print that on the screen and I'll be able to easily and quickly email that out or post it to a website or whatever I want to do with that text. I need to make sure I click save and then I can just close that tab and that shortcut is saved here into the auto text expander. You can see there it is at the bottom. So I'll be honest, that's probably my favorite of these. I use it the most. But this last one that I'm about to show is pretty sweet too. It's called Awesome Screenshot. Now, many of you know already there's lots of different ways to take a screenshot. You can watch my other tutorials to see some of those ways to take a screenshot. But this one is nice because it's built right into Chrome once you've added it, obviously. So I'm going to add extension. And here it is. It looks like a camera lens. And now that that's installed as an extension, anytime I'm on a website, I'm going to go back to Wall Street Journal. But anytime I'm on a website that I would like to maybe capture just part of it and you know maybe use it as uh, part of a presentation or you know something I want to share with others I can just screenshot it and yes I could use the Mac keyboard shortcut in this case or if I'm on a Windows computer I could use the snipping tool and things like that but if I'm using Chrome why not just go up here click the camera lens and I can choose capture visible part of page I can do even a delayed capture so it'll do a, a little countdown and then it'll capture. Okay, so three, two, one, and then it'll just take a picture of whatever it sees on the screen. You can also capture a selected area. You can capture an entire page and there's other options as well. You can even screenshot your desktop, which is nice. In this case, I'm just gonna capture the entire page. Now look what it does. It even scrolls down. It's gonna scroll down and it's gonna capture everything. Okay, so this is really one of the best features when you do capture the entire page. Once it's done with that, it takes you to a screen where you can make some edits. Okay, so here it is. It captured the entire screen. It's uh, kind of huge. I can now make some edits to this. For example, maybe I want to crop out some of it. It turned out to be bigger than I expected. So I can use crop, click and drag, and let go. And I can even adjust at that point. Okay, maybe that's really all I want is that. Now I can click crop and it's cropped it down to a manageable size. I can also annotate a little bit here. So I could use a pen to maybe underline different things and I can change the color if I don't like red. I can also add shapes and there's a couple of different shapes that I can choose from. I can add arrows to point things out to the students. I can even put in text if I want to. Just click, type in the text that I want to add to this screenshot and uh, you know there's so much more that I can do with it. When I'm done, just click done and it becomes a downloadable image. Yes, I could save it to my Google Drive account by connecting to Google, or I could just click Local Save. So this will save it as an image on my computer. I'm going to allow it to access downloads. Click Save, and it's putting a copy of this annotated screenshot onto my computer. Okay, so that's a really nice, handy tool. Especially I love that option that I showed you of capture entire page. It just scrolls through and takes those images and puts it on your computer. So those are really some of my favorite Google Chrome extensions. There are more, but those are some of the very best. So I hope that you'll enjoy using some of these Google Chrome extensions and that you'll find many more that you like just by going to the Google Chrome web store and searching for extensions or browsing through them. So thanks for watching and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for a new video at least every Monday.